Introducing the Breville Sous Chef, the all-in-one kitchen workhorse. The five and a half inch super wide chute is about three times larger than standard food processors. The mini bowl sits inside the extra large 16 cup processing bowl. Whenever you use any of the discs, make sure the spindle is in the correct position. The adjustable slicer should always be in the storage position when not using it and it'll conceal the blade. This is the first adjustable slicer to have the versatility of 24 thickness control settings. The Zero setting slices super fine at 0.33 millimetre slices to a thick 8 millimetre slice on 8. When you're slicing, check to make sure that the blade is at the 12 o'clock position as you don't want it directly beneath the chute. The small chute is ideal for carrots or leeks when you don't need a push up. The reversible shredding disc achieves both coarse and fine grating. For coarser shredding to make things like coleslaw, the larger holes should be facing up. In seconds, you'll have perfectly grated cabbage. For finer shredding, flip the disc and have the smaller holes facing up. The julienne disc is great to cut carrots and zucchini for salads. For shorter matchstick size vegetables, use the small feed chute and put them straight in. Use the french fry disc and you can fit a whole potato to make five inch french fries. Or for a new twist, try sweet potato. Be sure to not to apply too much pressure and just let it grab the potato. The emulsifying disc is used to whip and aerate ingredients such as cream, egg whites, milkshakes, and mayonnaise. The timer is handy to make recipes for the first time and you can monitor the time it takes and then program it in for the next time. The micro serrated S blade chops raw and cooked food to puree, chop and mince. For many processing tasks we recommend the pulse button so you can really control the size you want. For raw meat, chicken and fish cut them into one inch cubes and then use the start pause button to mince them. The kneading blade is great for pastry and bread and can easily handle large batches of dough. The mini bowl is ideal for time consuming prep chores like chopping garlic. To store there's a retractable cord that neatly sits in the heavy duty die cast base and you can lock the box and store it on its side. The Sous Chef brought to you by the Food Thinkers of Breville. Assembling your KitchenAid food processor for all models that include a two-in-one food pusher. These instructions apply to the seven cup food processor, the seven cup food processor with exact slice system, and the 14 cup food processor with commercial style dicing kit. Before using your food processor for the first time, wash all parts and accessories by hand or in the top rack of your dishwasher. Place the work bowl on the food processor base and align the raised locking element with the indentation on the base. Turn the work bowl counterclockwise until it locks into place. Pick the accessory you would like to use and install it using the instructions provided in the use and care guide specific to your food processor model. Once your preferred accessory is secured, place the lid onto the work bowl with the 2-in-1 feed tube positioned to the left of the handle. Turn the lid to the right until it locks into place, then fit the food pusher into the feed tube. If your food processor won't start, make sure the work bowl and lid are locked into place, checking that the lid is securely locked into the work bowl and the handle. Your food processor is now ready to create all your favorite dishes. Hi, I'm Mary Rogers, and this is a Cuisinart Classic Series 14 cup food processor. It's a very generous size, so you'll have plenty of room to be doing all your family entertaining, but it's still a nice small footprint, so you can use it for every day too. So you'll notice it's got a nice square base, and it has what we call um, paddles to operate. So here, this one, you press it down, it's um, on. This one is off. And if you press and hold this one down intermittently, it would be for pulsing. So, has a nice smooth finish. It's stainless steel on the outside. Has a lid that you remove by twisting and just pulling it off. It's really simple and easy to operate. This is your feed tube. And there's also a smaller feed tube inside, which I'm going to show you how to use a little bit later. And you can actually drop things in through the feed tube like garlic. We're going to do garlic and jalapeno. And you can actually have the machine running. And it's a very um, efficient way to chop up garlic and some other items. 
The other thing is that um, it's great if you want to add um, liquid very slowly. The small feed tube has a small hole in it, so if you want to make vinaigrette, you can just pour the oil directly into the um, small feed tube. Or if you're going to make mayonnaise where you want to slowly incorporate any kind of oil, it'll just drip through the feed tube directly into your bowl in a very consistent um, way so that you get a great finished mayonnaise or a vinaigrette. So let's look at some of the other items that come with your food processor. In the bowl already is your chopping blade. And we call this the S blade because it's shaped like a little bit like an S. And this is used for everything from chopping herbs and onions to pureeing, mixing, and also kneading doughs. Um, and then the next thing is your stem. And the stem is attached to the bottom of your um, discs by lining up this arrow here with this one here. It's a little hard to see. And you just press this down and turn to lock it into place. And then what you would do is you hold your disc by the, um, the edges and there's also a little icon up here. It's the same shape as the um, stem on the bottom. And if you line those two up, you can just slip it in really easily. So that's the shredding disc and it's medium. We always recommend that you lay the disc down and then put on the stem accordingly. And to do any type of slicing and shredding, you would use your the medium slicing disc, I mean, not shredding, slicing. And you do the same thing. You line the little arrows up. You press and turn to lock it into place. Always hold it by the edges. And once again, if you line the icon, the stem up, I'm not doing it very good, but this is the way it goes. You just slide it right into the work bowl. And then what you would do is you put your lid back on and you would slice and shred. So you could either use the pulse function to slice or what you can do is you can turn it on. But as soon as you move the feed tube, it'll stop. So that you would then add more ingredients and we can do batch processing. So you would add, let's say, potatoes, slice, and then continue on. And then we're just, we're going to turn it off. So what we're going to do today, that's all of the parts that come with your um, food processor. And also you get a little spatula we, we help you with. What we're going to do now is we're going to put in the chopping blade. I'm going to show you how to make a guacamole very quickly and easily. So just put that in. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our cilantro. I'm going to add most of it, not all of it. You're going to see how efficient this machine is at um, chopping up ingredients. So, um, very quickly and easily. So, I modified this recipe a little bit um, in comparison to how it's written in our instruction manual. Next, we're going to add our tomatoes, which were seeded and the pulp was, uh, the interior was taken out, the seeds. And we're going to um, pulse that until it's finely chopped. start using a food processor, it's a good idea to um, actually use the pulse function because of the fact that, um, you know, you just want to get used to using it. You also want to get used to um, the consistency and it gives you much greater control. So I'm just going to reserve this. Sorry, this is like a... I'm going to reserve some of this so that um, when we put the guacamole together at the end, it'll still have some of the chunky tomato, but I'm not gonna do all of it. And when you, you know, if you have your own favorite recipes, you can modify accordingly. So just remember that whatever you put in the bowl first, if it stays in there the whole time while you're chopping and, and, and mixing or pureeing, that will be the smallest thing at the end. So just keep that in mind. So I didn't remove everything, just um, most of it. So, the next thing what we're going to do is, with the machine on and running, we're going to drop in the garlic and the jalapeno through the feed tube. We're 
we're going to stop and just um, scrape down the bowl. And then we're going to move on and add um, our onions, our green onion. Oops, sorry. <laughs> so we have to add the green onion. Again, we're going to chop that until it's fine. And then we're going to add the uh, majority of the rest of our ingredients. The first being our fresh avocados. So we'll just do that by adding that like so. And um, the last of the ingredients. So of course, lime juice. This helps keep your um, guacamole also very fresh looking um, and gives it lots of extra flavor. This is the salt. Cumin. And then the last um, ingredient is the chili powder. Give it a little zip. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the lid back on and then we're going to pulse until it's really creamy. Okay, and then what we're going to do I'm just going to scrape it down one last time, and then I'm also going to add, because it still needs to be processed a little bit more, um, and then what I'm going to do at this point, too, is add the balance of the cilantro that I reserved. Okay, that looks like it's mixed really well because it's very creamy, I'll show you. It's nice and nice and very, very creamy looking. So the last step is to add back in the tomatoes and the cilantro. And this is really just so that they don't become, you know, when you're uh, pureeing the guacamole, you know, if it stays in there the whole time, you won't see the chunks of the tomato anymore. Let's just add that back in and we're gonna pulse until it's incorporated. So that's that. So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to add this to our decorative bowl for serving. And you know, you could also put a, a beautiful lime wedge on top. The other thing that you can do is add maybe a couple extra little pieces of tomato. Um, oh, I'm going to show you a little trick also. This is a really, really big batch of guacamole, so it's great if you're going to have a party. Um, but the other thing, too, to remember is if you are going to be making this and then serving it, like, later, it's a good idea to put a couple of the pits in with the guacamole in the meantime because this actually helps it, along with the lime juice, from turning brown on you. So you want to just cover this up. You can put it in the fridge if you want, or you can eat it right away. The other thing I want to mention too, is there's so many great things that you can use your food processor for, um, not just guacamole, but you can make pizza dough or pasta dough. You can also um, make cookies. You can make all kinds of things like chicken salads and vinaigrettes. It's a lot of fun to use. It's really simple to operate. And the best thing about it is all the removable parts are dishwasher safe.